Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. The orangutans have a new home at the Kansas City Zoo. The $6 million, 3,400 square foot orangutan canopy opened last week. The project was funded by the voter approved zoological district along with many donors. The space highlights fascinating aspects of the orangutans while challenging their dexterity and their intelligence. A grove of artificial and flexible yet extremely strong trees will provide climbing areas above the naturally planted forest floor. Guests can view the orangutans from several vantage points, including a canopy level open air shelter with a 40 foot long viewing window. Or you can watch them anytime by just going online to check out the two new webcams. Go to KansasCityZoo.com. Kansas City wants to increase access to healthy foods and to promote urban agriculture. That's why the city hosted a Grow and Tell forum recently. Here's a look at the Urban Ag Summit and how it may affect food policy. We've got about a quarter of a million people in Kansas City that fall in this food insecure designation, which means they live paycheck to paycheck, most of which are on food stamps. And by the third week, those food stamps run out. And so they oftentimes go with or without food at the, toward the end of the month. And that's exasperated by the fact that many of them, one in five families have children. And it, studies clearly indicate that children under the age of three that go without food don't develop mentally or physically to their fullest extent. We love creating community gardens with our orchards and one of the reasons we particularly like doing that is because uh, a vegetable bed is something that produces the year you put it in the ground. Uh, our fruit trees are going to take four or five years for them to really get to maturity where they're producing fruit. So in the meantime we can work with the neighborhood to get vegetables growing and get them in their kitchens and teaching them how to prepare fresh vegetables from the garden. Agriculture is incredibly important in Missouri and um, being able to understand uh, how you grow, produce, how you process and eat food. Imagine the nutritional value um, that we can, have, we can harness uh, if we are able to understand how food is produced and thus how it can be, how it can taste when it's at its peak ripeness or what we can do with it um, as we're um, preparing it. Urban agriculture offers opportunities to develop, com to develop our community um, in being putting land in um, and repurposing it into agriculture. Food has also always been part of our geographic, our landscape, our urban landscapes. Uh, cities used to have home gardens, community gardens, there were uh, stores that sold locally grown food, and so they were part of the network of businesses and people that made a community lively and interesting. And what's happened is just that people have been disconnected, become disconnected from this really important essential thing for human life and human community. And so urban agriculture is a movement to bring it back into the city, to, uh, to help people grow, to help people um, sell, to help keep the, their food dollars circulating locally. I think that uh, we're at a tipping point in agriculture where people are starting to understand the need to, be a, to have a realist, realistic understanding of where their food comes from. And we don't need food shipped a thousand miles to our plate. What we need to be doing is supporting our local communities and getting the food from our neighbors into our communities so that we can have healthy alternatives from the people within our city. Recycling in Kansas City is easy. Curbside recycling is a convenient way to recycle many common household items, and it's free if you live in a Kansas City household. Recycling is voluntary. Recyclables are picked up each week with your regular trash pickup. You will need a KC Recycles bin. It signals the truck to stop. Bins are available at Westlake Hardware Stores and Price Chopper Grocery Stores. In south parts of the city, trash and recycles are picked up by one truck. These specialized trucks have two compartments within the truck, one for trash and one for recyclables. There's a lot you can recycle. Newspapers, aluminum, steel cans, plastic containers one through seven, which include items like plastic milk jugs, soda bottles, yogurt tubs, and margarine containers. Be sure to check the number inside the chasing arrow symbol on the bottom of the container. You can also recycle most paper products, including clean mixed paper, like milk or juice cartons, 
juice boxes, junk mail, cardboard, cereal, or other dry food boxes. There's no limit on recyclable collection. While the KC Recycles Bin signals the truck to stop, if needed, you can place extra recyclables in cardboard boxes, paper bags, laundry baskets, or rubber tubs next to the KC Recycles Bin. Remember, there are some items you can't put near bin. Glass, plastic bags, styrofoam, styrofoam egg cartons, paper towels or tissues are some items that should not be placed in a recycle bin. Glass, styrofoam, and other items are accepted at the city's three recycling locations. Check our website for locations and operating hours. Ripple Glass also has numerous glass recycling locations throughout the city. Look for the big purple bins or Google Ripple Glass for locations. Motor oil, automotive fluids, or containers for household hazardous material are also items that should not be placed in your recycle bin. These items may be disposed of at the city's household hazardous waste facility. So just remember the three R's, reduce, reuse, and recycle. For more information about the city's recycling programs, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search KC Recycles. To watch additional FYI KC videos, visit our website at kcmo.gov and search FYI KC. Well, here we are at uh, Brush Creek here at the opening of another one of our murals as part of the MAPIT program, the Mural Arts uh, Initiating Transformation. Uh, this mural is uh, Coming Home to Brush Creek, done by Robin Case. Uh, we are excited to open up this latest uh, mural for our MAPIT program, and this is really one of what we hope will end up being hundreds of murals across the city. Uh, the reason why the MAPIT program is so important is because it's providing an opportunity to do two things. One is to beautify our city, and the other is to help our youth. It beautifies because it takes walls where there may be no programming, or it may be a wall that is prone to graffiti and tagging, and really doing something beautiful with it. We know that when you have a wonderful mural, many times people will step away from that because of the artistry involved, and they don't want to ruin that, and that's certainly the case with this mural here. Can you talk a little bit about the image of the lady there? Um, she was there because I wanted some kind of like, I don't want a personal element to this. So I needed somebody to see, you know, their face or someone's face that they kind of knew. I mean, I felt it was a little impersonal if it was just this cloudy sky and a handshake. And so she kind of is there, you know, represent either, you know, old lady with her winter or like somebody could just kind of like say, oh, that kind of reminds me of somebody I know. And it's just, she isn't someone in particular, it's just a face to give a face to the mirror. Okay. Um, and, but thanks, it's really nice to hear the inside, you know, that's the thing I know with public art is that there's always a lot of story behind the, the right. end of product and rarely do we get a chance to hear, you know, what the thinking was and all the experiences. Yeah. Well, thank you, Councilman Wagner, for inspiring the city to take on mural projects. And, you know, I'm very fortunate to be at Maddie Road Center where when you think of uh, creativity, when you think of nurturing artists, you look to the Maddie Rhodes Art Center, and I know Phil has exhibited at the community art gallery that we have on the west side. So, you know, for us, uh, I really want to acknowledge the work of Alicia Gambino and JT. Uh, both of them have put countless hours into uh, going out and visiting the sites, measuring the sites, pricing it all out, and managing the dollars and working with the park staff. So I want to commend, uh, obviously, my second family, the Park Department of the cooperation to make all of this happen. So for us, this just speaks to who Maddie Road Center is. It's about uh, service to our community. And if there's a way to bring attention to artists like Phil and others, and to have people celebrate the rich culture and diversity that we have in Kansas City, then we're there. So on, on behalf of Maddie Road Center, uh, I appreciate uh, being a partner. And I would like uh, Alicia just to say a few comments. But again, I just wanted to commend our two uh, wonderful staff. Uh. Thank you, John, and I want to thank you, Phil, for being um, so great to come on to this project. Um, I appreciate all the artists uh, that uh, worked with us, um, either the murals that are already completed or as we're moving into the future, into the summer, uh, because this is a new initiative. I do realize, having been a community muralist, that hey, wasn't all that, but we're you know we're moving forward. This this was to start. This is just a little start for us to open to more artists, calls for artists, other sites, and I want to really thank our uh, youth development uh, coordinator, JT. Um, he 
did a lot of work on this, hopping between sites, working with artists, and um, and he just did a really, really great job. I'm very proud of him. And um, can't wait until we are able to unveil the other ones. By the end of the summer, we should have uh, six in total. And so uh, we hope to see uh, walls like these uh, all over our city very soon. But the second thing that we are very excited about is the opportunity for our youth. Uh, we talk many times about building the skills for the future and the skills for our kids. Well, the reality is that it's not just the technology arts, but it's the arts where we need to develop those skills as well. Murals take a lot of different skills, very, very specific skills. And so the opportunity to match up established artists with youth is what MAPIT is all about. The idea is that we are going to be able to create new artists, new muralists through this program so that kids who may not have an opportunity to do the arts as a career can learn under the wing of a professional doing murals just like this one and then they themselves can become muralists and artists and can create their own opportunity for a career advancement in the future. So uh, we are excited to be here today uh, welcoming home Brush Creek, uh, but we know that there are many, many, many more opportunities coming up very soon and we look forward for the public to see those as well. See what's new at the KC Zoo. A great adventure waits for you. Penguins, polar bears, kangaroos. See it all at the KC Zoo. Ride high in the African sky safari or take a train to your favorite country. Travel all around the world and see all kinds of animals. It's always a new adventure at the Kansas City Zoo. Please join us for an opening night reception for The Art of Data at Arts KC 106 Southwest Boulevard. It's Friday, June 5th from 6 to 8 in the evening. The exhibit runs through June 26th at the Arts KC Gallery Space. My name is Don Wilkerson. I'm an artist. I work under the pseudonym MOI, which stands for the Minister of Information. So the, they sent out this list of, of different kinds of charts that, that they wanted people to respond to. And there were several of them that spoke to me. Like, what would, the, what would the person in the audience, when they're given this presentation about, you know, how the city's doing, what would, what would, what would the average person, how would they really like to see this chart? We all know city leaders use data to determine how to spend tax dollars and how to solve problems. We think our charts are artistic, so the city issued a call for artists to reinterpret some of the charts and graphs used in actual meetings here at City Hall. This exhibit is the first community project of the newly formed Office of Culture and Creative Services. It also celebrates the five-year anniversary of the Office of Performance Management, which produces, analyzes, and reports out that data. We hope the exhibit also sparks awareness of city services. This exhibit will showcase 10 local artists and creative teams, so join us on June 5th. Cycle in the City was a big success. Thousands of residents turned out to cycle, walk, and enjoy Ward Parkway for an open street festival between 63rd Street and Gregory Boulevard for three hours on a Saturday afternoon on May 16th. The event included demonstrations like stunt riders, children's bike safety learning areas, and other kinds of outdoor fun. One resident told us afterwards in an email, quote, it was 100% awesome. They also added that their kids still want to ride their scooters around the fountain. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, visit our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash KCMOCCO. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.